Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I have a resume? Okay, Sanjay, introduce yourself. Yeah, ma'am. First of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself, ma'am. My name is Sanjay. I am basically from Varangal, but currently I am staying in Hyderabad. Coming to my academics, I am currently pursuing B.Tech final year in the stream of ECE from Shadan College of Engineering and Technology, Mehdi Patna. And I previously completed diploma in the stream of ECE from VMR Polytechnic College, Varangal. I completed my SSC in Telangana State Model School. Uh, and I did project in my diploma on a automatic home based, oh, sorry, automatic hand sanitizer. In okay. that we will use, by using the Arduino Uno and sensors and stepper motor, we done the experiment and I am the leader of that experiment, oh, sorry, project. Uh, in that project, when we place the hand in front of the sensor, then we'll, it will uh, read the, uh, there is an object in front of the sensor and it will give the commands to the uh, Arduino Uno. And Arduino you know, will give the commands to the stepper motor and stepper motor will give the uh, alcohol that uh, acid out. And in my, uh, currently I am working on a smartphone based home appliance control system in my BTEC. That is a minor project. Uh, in that uh, using uh, mobile we will connect to the Bluetooth and by using that mobile we will give the commands and control the home appliance like fans and uh, uh, lights, all the home appliances we can control through the mobile only. And apart from my academics, uh, I completed uh, uh, Java certification in great learning and uh, completed soft skills on uh, TCS career edge and uh, <coughs> completed fundamentals of full stack development in XLR. And uh, now currently I am uh, going on uh, uh, fun, uh, full stack uh, Java development in Neugen Infotech. Hmm. Coming to my hobbies, my hobbies are uh, learning new things, uh, watching movies, uh, playing cricket and if I went to in my home, I will help for father in farming. These are my hobbies. And coming to my strengths, I will always think positive and uh, hard working and uh, I will learn new, new technologies daily daily. So I think this is also my one of the strengths. Uh, coming to my weakness, I, do, I think I don't have any uh, technical or work related weakness. If I have any weaknesses, then I will correct. This is about myself now. Okay, good. Okay, Sanjay, now I'm asking some technical questions on Java. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Explain about Java architecture. Yeah, ma'am. Java architecture mainly consists of five parts that source code, byte code, object, machine code, and uh, it will contain two softwares compiler and interpreter the code which we have written by the programmer or the human beings it is called as a source code it is saved in the extension of dot java and that source code is converted into byte code through compiler the compiler will compile the source code into the byte code if there is any syntax error in the source code then it will give the compile time error if the syntax is correct then it is goes to the it will convert the byte code and then bytecode is converted into machine code through the interpreter or JVM. It will having a uh, uh, source code, uh, that bytecode is converted into machine code through interpreter. Bytecode is saved in dot class extension. Uh, JVM will also, JVM also having garbage collection. The garbage collection means deleting the unwanted object files. The machine code is saved in dot obj file. Uh, the unwanted ob object files will be uh, deleted by the garbage collection. So this saves the memory. This is about the architecture of Java. Okay. Explain features of Java. Features of Java. Java is a very simple language. It can be easily understandable and learnable by uh, newly learning programmers also. And it is a oops object oriented programming language. That means it will follow the pre four principles of the object oriented programming language that are encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism and inheritance. And uh, third one is, it is a uh, <coughs> platform independent. It can be used in any operating system like Windows, Linux and other operating systems also. It is an interpreter language. That means it is using the interpreter which will convert bytecode into the machine code. So it is an interpreter language. And uh, it, it is operated in uh, multi multi-threaded environment also. Like that, these are many, like many advantages and features are there in Java. Okay. 
what is meant by object oriented programming language object oriented programming language a programming language which follows the four principles of object oriented programming language like encapsulation abstraction inheritance and polyformism that is object oriented programming language okay what is the source code source code is a code which is written by the programmer or the humans which we are written which is understandable by the humans is known as source code okay what are types of packages packages there are four types of packages public private protective and default okay public De means uh, if the uh, uh, public means the access level is we can access uh, within the class out the outside the class within the package outside the package coming to the private we can access only within the class and default within the package and protected within the package and outside the package with the child class only okay difference between string class and string buffer oh, string class is a predefined class and a primitive data type it is immutable and that means we can't change the value of the string uh, string buffer is a mutable we can change the value of the string okay explain about access modifiers access modifiers access modifiers there are user defined uh, okay access modifiers just a second huh? okay okay all right what is the use of uh, wrapper classes wrapper classes wrapper classes is used to convert the primitive data types into objects the process of converting primitive data types into objects is known as auto boxing and the process of converting objects into primitive data types is known as unboxing okay types of exceptions exception there are two types of exceptions they are checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions checked exception means the exception which is coming during the compile time error examples io exception and sql exception and the un uh, unchecked exceptions means the exceptions which are coming at run time error examples are arithmetic exceptions array index out of bound exceptions these are the okay difference between multitasking and multi threading right. multitasking means uh, uh, execution of multiple tasks at a same time is known as multitasking multi threading means execution of multiple threads at a time is known as multi threading in multitasking the operating system will allocate separate separate memory for the separate separate tasks whereas in the multi threading the operating system will allocate uh, only uh, one memory to the one task and that memory is shared by the all the threads and in multi threading the multitasking the cpu will frequently shifts between the task in multi threading uh, the cpu will frequently shifts between the threads this is okay the what is auto boxing and unboxing uh, the process of converting the uh, object uh, primitive data types into objects is known as auto boxing and objects into primitive data types is known as unboxing okay sanjay we will get back to you come on thank you